Hi, let's solve this very interesting case study type of question. So this question does not have any specific way, any particular process that can be used to solve it uh, uh, directly. You have to come up with the process when you see this question. So this is one of those questions that, uh, that emphasizes the requirement to own the data set before you start solving the question. You need to understand the information that is given to you. You need to draw correct inferences and you need to simplify the conditions that are given to you to be able to solve this question. So let's see how we can do that. For each of the 18 recent purchases, so we are talking about 18 recent purchases and something is true for each of them. That included each of products A to D. So each of these 18 recent purchases included products A to D. The table shows the product subtotals. So we have a table here and it says that the table shows the product subtotals. What is product subtotal? The unit price for that product multiplied by the number of units bought as part of that purchase. All right. So we have four products here, A, B, C, D, and we have these 18 purchases here. And yeah, so we have these 18 purchases here. Now it has been told that in each, each of these 18 purchases, uh, each of these includes all these four products, right? And these values here are product subtotals, which is what? So product subtotal is number of units for, let's say, uh, uh, for a seat one, the number of units is in A1 and the price per unit is PA. Then the, the, the 60 represents the product of NA1 into PA, right? So this is 60 for receipt number one. Let's read further. For example, the table shows in the purchase corresponding to receipt 1. So again, the example of receipt 1 has been given. 14 euros of the total purchase was due to the purchase of units of product T. So this example has been given here. That this 14. This 14 is number of units for D in the first uh, receipt multiplied by the unit price of D. All right. Let's read further. For each product, the number of units bought was always an integer. So we have this condition given to us here that if n represents the number of units, then it was always an integer. That is, um, uh, we could have bought one units, two, one unit, two units, three units. We could not have bought half unit, three fourth unit. That is not possible. All right, let's read further. And for each product, the unit price was the same for each of the 18 purchases. What does that mean? If the unit price is PA here for the first receipt, then it will be PA for the second as well, PA for the third as well, and so on. So let's say this is PA, this is PB, the unit price for these products. So it will be same for all the receipts. So let's say these are the unit prices, PA, PB, PC, and PD. Now, with this information, let's read the question stem. So, the question stem says that for each of the following products, that is for product A, B, and C, select sufficient. If the information provided is sufficient to determine whether the unit price of the product exceeds 3 euros, right? Exceeds 3 euros. So, we are not talking about equality here. Otherwise, select insufficient. So, basically, if PA um, exceeds dollar three. If we can determine it, whether it is yes or no, then we have to write sufficient. So click sufficient. And if it cannot be determined, then we have to write insufficient. Right? So this is the thing to be noted here. One thing is that the condition is that the unit price is greater than three euros or less than three euros. So uh, basically, if it is now, so yeah, one, that is one thing. Equality is not here. The second thing is we do not have to exactly um, uh, get to the unit price. We just have to make sure whether we can make sure that it is greater than three uh, euros or not. If it cannot be determined, then it will be insufficient. So let's try to solve this here. And let me remove all the additional information here. So let's start with product A, right? The, the first product A. So what are the different subtotals given for product A? Let's take a note of it. The different subtotals are 60. So this is 60, 60, then we have a 57. So this is 57. So I'm taking a note of all distinct subtotals here. 54, 48, 42, 36, 30, 24, 18, 12, 
and 6. Right. Now we know that these subtotals are a product of number of units, which is an integer. And this number of units differs for all these receipts. This is NA2. This is NA3. This can be different for all the receipts. So this into the, uh, the per unit price. Right. And this is something that we need to determine. So one thing that we know for sure is that uh, the, the unit price is a factor of all these numbers here. Right. So we can start by considering the highest common factor. The highest common factor here is 3. Right. So what are the possible values of P, A? The possible values will be the factor of fa all the factors of this HCF. So the factors of 3 are 1 and 3. Right. So P, A will either be equal to 1 euro or P, A will be equal to 3 euros. Right. We do not know what exactly P, A is, but for sure we know that P, A is less than 3 euros. So this is something that can be determined. So the answer is sufficient here. Let's check for product B now. So let's write all the uh, distinct subtotals for product B. So these are 50, 35, 10, 30, 27.5. So we have a decimal here. 15, 45, we already have 30. We Okay, 20, 50 is there. Then we have another decimal here. 7.5, then 45, 30 is there, 25, all right, then 5, then 42.5, another decimal, 30 and 40. So definitely we know here that NB into PB are these values and we know that N is integer. So wherever the subtotal is decimal, we know that it is the unit price which would have been a decimal value, right? Because n is an integer. We already know this thing. n is an integer. So n cannot be a decimal value. So it is the, uh, the price per unit which is the decimal value. So let's start with one of these numbers. Let's start with 7.5, <laughs> right? Because PB has to be a factor of 7.5. So let's see what is 7.5. 7.5 is 75 by 10, which is, uh, sorry. So this is 25, so this is 15 by 2, right? If we express 15 in terms of its factors, it will be 1 into 3 into 5 by 2. So what are the possible values of PB? Possible PB? The first one is 1 by 2, which is 0.5. The second one is 3 by 2 which is 1.5 and the third one is 5 by 2, which is 2.5, right? So considering this subtotal, these are the possible values. Now, uh, because these are all the subtotals, so the correct possible values of PB, uh, PB can have one or two or three of these values, right? However, to make sure uh, that which, which ones are actually correct, we can see that which which ones are a factor of all these values here, all the subtotals given for B, right? So let's see, is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, is it a factor of all these values? So we can see here that 0.5 is, uh, sorry for that. Yeah, so 0 0.5 is a factor of all these values, right? So we cannot reject 0 0.5. 0 0.5 can be a correct possible value of BB. All right, let's evaluate the second one, which is 1.5. Now, 1.5 is not a factor of 10, right? Uh, it is not a factor of 20. So therefore, this is not a correct possible value of PB. 2.5. So let's see if 2.5 is a factor of all these uh, uh, all these subtotals. So we can see here that all these numbers, all these subtotals are multiples of 5 or 2.5. Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just by looking at all these numbers, we can understand that 2.5 is a possible value of PB because it is a common factor for all these subtotals. So the possible values of PB are, the possible values of PB are 0.5 euro or 2.5 euro. Now, we do not know which one is correct, 
but for sure we know that both these values are less than 3 euros. So again, we can determine whether PB is less than 3 euros or not and hence the correct answer here would be that the information given to us is sufficient. Let's now evaluate product C. So here are all the distinct subtotal values for product C and we can see that other than this decimal number all are actually products of uh, all, all are actually multiples of 3. So let's understand this decimal value 16.5 which is 165 by 10 which is 33 by 2. So if we break it down into all its factors it would be 1 into 3 into 11 by 2. So the possible values possible values of PC would be 1, 1 by 2, which is 0.5, second, 3 by 2, which is 1.5, and third, uh, 11 by 2, which is 5.5. So let's see um, which, of, which of these is a factor of all these subtotals to understand that uh, what all can be the possible values of PC if we consider all subtotals. So here we can see that 0.5 is a factor of all these numbers. So 0.5 is uh, a possible value. Again, since 3 is a factor of all the other numbers, so 1.5 is also a factor of all the other numbers. So this is also possible. Now let's evaluate 5.5. So is uh, mm, is 9 divisible by 5.5? Is 6 divisible by 9, 5.5? No, so 5.5 is not a factor of all these subtotals. Hence, the two possible values of PC Sorry for that. Um, so the two possible values for PC are 0.5 euro or 1.5 euro. And again, both of these are less than 3 euros. So again, this is something that can be determined. So the correct answer here would be sufficient for choice C as well. Hope this was helpful. Happy learning.